Hello everybody, this is Iced Blood. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIII. Here in the beginning of this episode, I'm going to admit something I've never admitted before. I have heard this game called a walking simulator before, meaning that all you do is walk forward, and that's it. And for the first time, I'm actually kind of confronting the notion that that's kind of true. Uh, once again, if you want to read this little synopsis about where we are, go ahead and pause the video so you can read. Um, this text scrolls way too fast. If I were to read it out loud, it would sound rather ridiculous. So I'm not going to subject you to that. Um, I mentioned before, I will acknowledge this game's flaws, and right now you're hearing it firsthand. Yeah, there's not much to honestly do here in the beginning. In that case, what I would say is, treat it like an interactive movie. Now, I know what you're thinking already. If I wanted to watch a movie, I'd watch a movie. If I want to play a game, I want to be able to actually do something. And for the most part, I can, I can agree with that. I can understand the concept behind that. But let's just enjoy the ride, shall we? Let's see what's going on with the Resistance. I dig these guys' hair. Some good stuff. We're all in this together. Our enemies, the Cocoon Sanctum. Their dreaded Psycom, no less. What's the dread? Psycom's nothing but a whole bunch of bluster and bullying. They've got nothing on Nora. Ooh. Well, we are the heroes after all. Them's fighting words. Well, let's prove it. Yeah. So I mentioned in the end of last video that um, Snow here is probably my favorite character ever. And this definitely does put me in the minority yet again, even amongst fans of this game, who tend to agree that Snow is a blustering idiot. Um, I don't know what to say other than I really like this stupid son of a bitch. Um, he is earnest. He actually does believe the kind of crap that he spews. I get that it sounds stupid. But I can't help but appreciate that kind of optimism. And his coat's pretty cool. I mean, look at that. His weapon is the designs or whatever it is that's on the back of the coat. I don't actually know what those are. Uh, is it, is it like patches? Looks like patches, maybe. Yeah. Like, that's really cool. I'm weird. I'm one of those classic, like cliche cases. I like trench coats. I don't own one, but I like them. Um, I don't really think I could pull them off, but, you know, characters that can, I really like them, so, you know, that didn't hurt Snow's case, shall we say. <sighs> there are soldiers everywhere. Yo, boss, what's the plan? Charge in, guns blazing. Hey, that's not a plan. Real heroes don't need plans. That does seem like a weird method of going about things. We're gonna lead a resistance! Let's just go fight shit! That does seem rather foolhardy. But then, look at the fact that he survived as long as he has. Alongside his fellow freedom fighters. That's gotta count for something, right? I mean, we have to take what the story gives us at face value. So this dude is leading this, like... Rebellion against the establishment, man. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to be part of the machine, man. He's been leading this rebellion with that kind of strategy, which is rush in and hit things. And yet, in spite of that distinct lack of planning, he has managed to lead this rebellion rather well. At the very least, like I said, he's alive. And considering, I'm sure this is not the first war zone he's fought in. He and his fellows here. Uh, Godot and Labrau. I think that's how you pronounce those. Um, this is not their first fight, I'm sure. Um, they clearly look seasoned. And so, they've done rather well for themselves, for the most part. Now, as to whether or not they are an effectual threat to the government, that's a whole different question, and to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure, somehow I doubt it. In fact, they're probably helping the government because it's a scare tactic, right? So, 
um, sanctum is able to paint this resistance as a bunch of you know ne'er do wells and nefarious threats to their livelihoods and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're domestic terrorists, and it kind of gives them a united front through which they can manipulate the populace. Because, of course, this is a game. We are dealing with a government. And, of course, games, governments, game governments? Governments in games? The governments of games? Whatever. I don't know exactly how to phrase that. They're almost always evil, right? The only utopian government is no government. Anyway, let's see what he's got going here. Ooh. Refugees! Yay! I wonder how they decide who gets those coat things. Saz and Lightning were wearing those. You all okay? I wonder if they're special. <laughs> hey, careful with those. <laughs> Don't worry. No one's moving to Pulse today. We'll clear you a path out of here, so be ready Wait. to... Let me fight yeah, with you! You can't expect us to just sit here! <laughs> Could help. Yep. Please, let us help! Here, though, this is pretty smart. I like what Snow's doing here. Volunteers front and center. That's cool. Instead of being a blowhard going, No! You can't fight! We have to protect you! He's letting the people rise up for themselves. That's that's really cool. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Keep in mind, I'm going to probably be apologizing for every stupid thing Snow does. So, just keep that in mind. I love this guy. I think he's awesome. Ooh. Who's this, I wonder? Oh ho! We have a mama bear on our hands. That's dangerous. All right, last one. Somebody take it. Hmm. All right. So we have probably a sheltered kid who can't stand the sight of guns. And a sheltered kid who has no idea how to use a gun. That's cool, though. See what I mean? This guy's great! She pretends to shoot him, and he pretends to get hit. Like, that's adorable. Come on. Oh, I love him. He's great. He's awesome. I love this guy. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna gush for the entire video. I'm sorry, but come on. That was cool. I know it's dangerous. You're not supposed to aim a gun if you're not prepared to shoot. I know that, but this is a game, and, you know, come on. Anyway, yeah, this is awesome. I love this. Time to go, kiddo. So let's see where it takes us now. Uh, so that kid is watching his mom head off to war, and he probably feels all, you know, emasculated in his little dress. I'm not actually making fun of the stuff he's wearing. That robe's pretty cool. I want one. Like, that'd be awesome. Um... Anyway, let's see where we go now. Um, obviously, we're going to save up here. And we have another corridor to walk down. Yay! See, the whole point of this right now is it's setting the stage. Right? And I'm not necessarily saying that, oh, the game gets so much better after this initial part. Because this is a pretty good indicator of what the game is like in the beginning. By which I mean basically the first half, I think. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where if you're not interested at least a little bit by this point in the game, you're probably not going to like it. And that's probably why it's not very popular, because I'm sure a lot of people aren't fond of it at all. Since I am, since my whole impetus for this channel is storytelling and narrative, this caught me basically immediately. I love these people, I think they're fascinating, and I think what little we've seen of them is more than enough to get the story going. And that's a sign of a company that knows who they're dealing with, who these people are. And that's why I find it strange when I hear people talk about how this game doesn't have any good characters. Because so far, pretty much everybody 
has been awesome on a narrative level. Whether you like a character as a person doesn't actually matter. The question is, are they a real person? Do they have specific motivations that make sense? Do they go about fulfilling those motivations in a way that makes sense? Do they seem human? If the answer is yes, then I think the, the job has been done correctly. I think the character is done correctly. If they seem like a human being, that's all I need. I don't need a good person. I don't need somebody that I like personally. I'm not going to go out to dinner with any of these folks. I think that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about, is that you can have a good character even if they're an annoying person. If they're a real person, annoying or not, that's enough. It really is. Ooh, uh-oh, we get to fight a behemoth! Here's a classic Final Fantasy monster for you. Oh, look at him. He's fucking cool. Let's murder him! The beta behemoth. So... We're not doing too much damage per hit, so normally... The way that I would go about this fight is to look at his... Um... What do they, what do they call it? The chain gauge? I forget. I, <laughs> the tutorial was just in the last video and I've already forgotten. But the, the gauge on the top right there, I would be focusing on that because the key to doing a lot of damage to a monster with a lot of health or a lot of defense is to stagger them. And so, really, it's more the, the gauge at the top right that matters, not their HP bar. Thing is, this is still the beginning. It's still kind of starting things slow. So, as you can tell, the stagger gauge is not nearly... It's we still got about 50 points. Well, 40 now. But, if you look at the behemoth's health, he's almost dead, like, so he's gonna die, um, right there. But see, that's something I just did, and I'm not saying that I'm some strategic mastermind, but if we'd waited for both attacks to land, he probably would've gotten that attack off. Since we cut the attack at, uh, in the middle, he died before he got a chance, so. There's some nuances to this battle system. Uh oh. Oh, good. Okay. Here we go. See, that's what's cool about Snow. Like, he's not all talk. Much as, you know, our little narrator. Our little narrator. Look at. Listen to me. I sound like a sexist asshole. Our narrator says he looks like he's all talk. But whether he's all talk or not, he did just rush headlong into the fray. Stupid or not, you can't deny it's brave. A Ravenclaw this man is not, but he's certainly a Gryffindor, so, you know. Anyway, sorry for the gratuitous Harry Potter reference, but I'm sure most of you understand what I'm getting at. I don't know if that counts as gratuitous. And yes, by the way, I'm talking about random shit because I hate this part. Because I don't think Mom's going to do all that well. Listen to me talking like I've never played this before. I know exactly what's about to happen, and it freaking sucks. Alright. And this is what caught me. I mean, we've been playing this game for, oh, what is it, 45 minutes now? Ish? Less than an hour, uh, collectively, over the past few days. And already the narrative has got me. Because, like, okay, this is... Frickin' terrifying, I'm sorry. Like, a lot of this, you know, we, we get stories with a lot of explosions and shit. But here, we're seeing the direct consequences of all those explosions. And here's the thing that's interesting about that. We know who she's talking about. Snow doesn't. I'm not sure why I find that so interesting, but, you know, I think it's kind of an interesting bit of... Yeah, there it is. Frickin' figures. <sighs> Again, love the voice acting. This is some good stuff. Oh, 
Okay, so we're going to switch heroes, I think, again. But... Yep, there it is. So this is the basically the end of a chapter or an end of a section, so we're going to cut the video off here. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Alright, that's it for me. Bye-bye.